Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Mountain House Photography. Join me in another nice clear night as we gaze up into the heavens and we're gonna be going after a galaxy, but a particular galaxy that I love around this time of year. Now this galaxy has been imaged thousands of times and it is definitely a crowd favorite because it is so large and so close. And in fact, it is our neighbor. But now as we're heading in towards the fall months, it is now time for Andromeda to really be shining now in our night skies. Now usually I like to make a point at least every single year to get an image of Andromeda but using with a different telescope. The first time I did it was through a super close up with a C11. Then I moved over to a Explorer Scientific 102 which is probably my best one I've done yet. I've done it with an Ampatura 60 millimeter EDR but now we're going to take things a little bit wider and we're going to be capturing the Andromeda Galaxy with the rocket on, but I am going to be adding a little bit of a twist to it because not only am I going to be shooting just straight RGB for this, I'm also going to be adding a little bit of some hydrogen alpha data just to make those nebulas inside of that galaxy really begin to shine. So essentially it's going to be a HA RGB image. I've already started capturing it a little bit last night. We've had a streak of about a week of nothing but clear skies. The moon right now is at a half phase, so I am starting to kind of run out of time of doing anything in a broadband aspect. I got one more clear night tonight, which are gonna shoot a little bit of some hydrogen alpha with the Optolong L Ultimate. But I'm also gonna finish up a little bit of some RGB data as well, all the way towards the morning hours, because coming up here, we do have a hurricane that's down in the Gulf Coast right now, and we're gonna be starting to see a little bit of some clouds of that beginning to move in tomorrow during the afternoon hour. So we'll be looking at a little bit of a break. And I know I've been doing a lot of imaging videos as of lately, but take advantage while you could because it's been so nice, nice nights in general, super clear, nice and comfortable as far as temperature wise, but we are gonna be having the moon deciding to show up. So we're gonna be having to switch things over to narrowband, but I also do have some other videos coming up, especially to really help with anyone with astrophotography, especially when it comes to calibration frames, because I need to be doing those again for the season. So here's the setup we're gonna be working with. The same one that has been for the last couple of videos is my Rockinon 135 millimeter camera lens, which is down to a F2 ratio. Nice and fast system where I also have the ZWO AM5 strain wave gear mounts on top of my homemade pier and of course the only cool camera i have still my trusty zwo asi 2600 mc pro one shot color camera inside of the filter wheel here going to be using two different filters the optolong l quad enhance for broadband and the optolong l ultimate to get some of that nice ha data controlling everything underneath this is a zwo asi air plus Guiding, I'm going to be using the SV Boney 30mm guide scope with the guide camera being the ZWO ASI 120 Mini. Now as we await for nightfall, before we start setting up our image sequence and doing a little bit of some adjustments of the polar alignment, definitely like to thank our sponsor for today, and that is out in Astroprints. Are you ready to take your astrophotography to the next level? At Alton Astro Prints, we've got the perfect 3D printed solutions to enhance your stargazing experience. Welcome to Alton Astro Prints on Etsy, your go-to shop for custom 3D printed accessories designed specifically for astrophotography. We know that capturing the beauty in the night sky requires more than just a great camera, it requires the right tools and setup. 
from cable management solutions for your deep sky cooled cameras to mounts for your mini computers or accessories that are designed to make your astrophotography setup smoother and more efficient. Each product is crafted from durable PETG material built to withstand the extremes of hot, cold, and dew-filled nights, but also designed to handle the toughest conditions so you can focus on capturing those breathtaking celestial moments without worrying about your gear. Whether you're an amateur stargazer or a seasoned astrophotographer, Alan Astro Prince has a little something for everyone as we continue to grow our selection. Explore a range of accessories and discover how we can enhance your night sky adventures. Visit us today at Alan Astro Prince on Etsy and find your perfect accessory to elevate your astrophotography experience. Let us know how we can help you reach the stars. And the good news is we have the filters for the Sea Star, the upgraded filters, back in stock after the complete blowout sale that we had over the Labor Day weekend. So they're back in stock now for your viewing pleasure. Now it's been wonderful that the store has actually been doing pretty darn well and I'm very thankful for all of you. So let's go ahead and wait for nightfall and we'll see you back on the computer. Okay, so we have the first image here, and you can see, can't really see much of anything besides the main core, but once we get later into the night, we'll be able to see more of these areas of nebulae that's located inside of the galaxy, and then we'll be able to add that to our master light frame once everything is done. So we'll let this run through the night yet again, and we'll be back here once we are fully stacked and get ready to image process. Now we have fully completed our stacking process. I got roughly about 15 hours worth of broadband data with the Optolong L Quad Enhance. I've also got three hours worth of data using the Optolong L Ultimate just to get that hydrogen alpha data that we want to add to our broadband image. So going over towards Pixin site here, this is fresh out of the stack that we have for both of these. This is the broadband data and it looks pretty darn good. We got some nice banding ongoing right near the core. And the other image here is the hydrogen alpha data. You can see those nice bright red areas that are popping up in the spiral bands of this galaxy. We're going to combine those together to create something as a what they call HARGB. So of course with any images that you work with, you want to make sure you do dynamic background extraction, which I've gone to do that with Graxpert. Next is Blur Exterminator and some Noise Reduction. And I do the same thing over here with the Hydrogen Alpha data where I've gone a liberty of doing Dynamic Background Extraction. I've done Blur Exterminator and Noise Reduction. But the difference is we're going to stick this off to the side here and we'll extract the channels out of the HA03 data because we only want the hydrogen alpha, which is located in the red channel, which I've already gone ahead and did that. Now, keep in mind, this looks a little weird because it is a non-stretched image. And sometimes when you run noise exterminator with a non-stretched image, it kind of acts funky, but we're not gonna really focus on that too much. So, went ahead and removed the stars so I can have a lot of that nebulosity to add to our regular image and the tool that I use that's found to be extremely easy and helpful is under the Pixinsight toolbox which I'll leave links to the repository for this and I have a whole entire video dedicated to how to go step by step by adding hydrogen alpha data to your RGB data. I'll leave a little bit of a pinned uh, video at the top here and as well as down and below so you can follow that because it's a little bit of a longer process and I just want to get you to what this final image is. But using inside of the toolbox, I just use a simple thing as what is called 
Uh, let's see here. Combine HA with RGB. So selecting our RGB channel, which is this one right here. RGB integration, which will pop up. And I'm not going to do a linked stretch right now because that's when we start doing color uh, correction and all that kind of stuff later on down the line. And add the hydrogen alpha. We combine those together. And depending on, you know, your taste of not trying to have it blow out your background, you can zoom right on through here. And you can kind of add the weights of, you know, how much you want to add to your image in general. So what these nice little slider bars here, you got the, uh, the H beta region, so you can also help it from bleeding out in the background with this slider here because you don't want that in your image at all. So you get something like this because you can start to see a little bit of some of that faint hydrogen alpha data in the background right here that's actually around the Andromeda galaxy. And of course you just hit select and it will bring you to you know your f image that you're going to work with right here. You do your color calibration, you know, you start really processing the data. And in the end, I ended up with something like this. This has definitely been probably my favorite image of Andromeda I have done this far. And I know there is some comments in the community post when I was talking about this. to say, yeah, the next level is adding 100 hours of oxygen 3 to get that really faint oxygen arc that is associated around the outside of the galaxy. But that is not going to happen with a one-shot color camera. I can tell you that now. So here is the wonderful image. You can see very clearly of all of these hydrogen alpha regions, which are actually uh, nebulas inside of the galaxy over a million light years from Earth. So they're all surrounded throughout this galaxy, even just outside where I was able to capture a little bit more of that fainter dust associated with the galaxy. And of course you have the two uh, intersecting galaxies nearby too, like M32 and M110. You have a lot of more of that faint dust. You had some fake uh, emission nebulae way on the outside. Now, I would love to add some oxygen-3 and sulfur-2 data to this eventually, but we're running into a period of nothing but clouds, unfortunately, for about the next week or so, and plus with the moon on its way to full sometime, uh, basically, this upcoming Wednesday. So... Here's the final image of everything, like I mentioned, of how to add hydrogen alpha to your RGB data. I have a separate video for that that I will leave down below. Leave a like, comment, subscribe to the page. Be sure to check out Out in Astro Prints for all of your astrophotography needs and as well as your accessories for the dwarf labs and the Sea Star telescopes. Or if you have anything custom that you want it printed, just let me know and I'll see what I can do for you. Thank you as always, clear skies, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.